I'm not going to tell you to get a divorce, but I'm sure as hell might be thinking it. I'm Laura. I'm a licensed marriage and family therapist. I'm also a certified Gottman therapist and co-host of Marriage Therapy Radio. Yeah, I'm Zach. I'm also the co-host of Marriage Therapy Radio with Laura. I have a couples therapist in private practice in Seattle, also a certified Gottman therapist. Today, we're going to be analyzing romantic relationships in some popular films. Right, so this is La La Land. Mia is an aspiring actress and Sebastian is an aspiring jazz musician. Sebastian has gained a steady job by joining a touring band. Mia turns down his offer to come on the road with him because she needs to rehearse her upcoming one woman play. Yeah, but can't you rehearse anywhere? Anywhere you are? I mean, I guess. Um... Well, all my stuff is here, and it's in two weeks, so I don't really think that would be okay. the best idea well, right now, but I wish I could. Okay, that's crap. Whenever people say, "I, you know, I just wish I could, make it happen. Don't say I wish I could if it's an empty wish. Do you like the music you're playing? I don't, I don't know what, what it matters. Well, it matters, because if you're going to give up your dream, I think it matters that you like what you're playing on the road for years. Laura, how many times have you heard couples come in and say, we don't even know what we were arguing about? I have no idea. Yeah, every couple. That's every the, couple. It's, I think that's what's going to happen here. And now you're going to be on tour with him for years, so I just didn't... I don't know. What, what are you doing know right if now? You were happy. Why are you doing this? What are you doing right now? Yep. <laughs> I thought you wanted me to do this. It just sounds like now you don't want me to do it. As a therapist, when you're watching couples do exactly what this couple's doing, do you ever feel like you're kind of getting swept up in a tornado and you really can't track and you're just like, wait, what's going on here? If this was happening right in front of me, I would let it play. And eventually I would say, do you guys have any idea what you're talking about right now? and they would stop and it would jar them. The other one I would say is, do you have any idea what the purpose of this conversation is? Like, they never know why, because I don't even know what the end of this conversation is gonna be, apart from disaster, because they don't have a shared goal. They don't have a shared understanding of what they're trying to accomplish together. And that becomes apparent because he plays this card, which is, well, I did what you wanted, so why aren't you gonna do what I wanted? They're no longer talking with each other, they're only talking at, at each, each other. other. Yeah. So I pennies so Take I can start what you've a club made no and start the club. The people will want to go to it. Where should they have stopped? Because there is an important stopping point that couples need to recognize where they're no longer having an intelligible conversation. Well, it, your question about when should they have stopped, it's kind of like asking, when should we parachute out of this plane that's about to crash? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Any time yeah. before it hits the ground. I mean, I'm finally in something that 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 that, that people enjoy. Since when do Just you care I don't enjoy about it, being matter. liked? Why do you care so much about being liked? You're an actress. What are Whoa. you talking about? <sighs> yep. Shots fired. Yeah, if he says, I'm sorry, hold on, let me go, let me just go compose myself real quick. I didn't, I shouldn't have said that. Mm -hmm. What you're saying is this is, this would be the opportunity for repair. Yeah. Instead, he's... You just liked me when I was on my ass because it made you feel better about yourself. Are you kidding? No. <sighs> I know he's that guy hurt. very well. Yeah, <laughs> you do. <laughs> I think it's interesting and actually quite brilliant that they wrote in this fire alarm because I think we need this idea of this fire alarm or this like third thing to pull us out of whatever's going on. And I just think that if you think of a fire alarm, going? it's like, what is she doing? There's this. Wait, no, what? Don't stop. Come. Uh. So she leaves. You wanted her to stick with it. You wanted her to help him. I, like I said, this, I mean, this thing literally ends in a disaster. But um, no, that fire alarm was brilliant. After the moment that they've already hurt one another, then you get this fire alarm. And I just wish that that fire alarm had gone off like two minutes earlier. The methodology that we come out of, which is the Gottman method, has this idea that there are four sort of relationship destroying behaviors and they were all over that conversation. Yeah. Like his defensiveness, 
her criticism right. when he goes, you're just an actress. There's contempt, right? Which is yep. problematic. Some of us have to choose what's called stonewalling, which is what she did, right? She just went totally Shut inside down. and then left the, mm-hmm. left the room. And none of that makes room for a relationship. If you recognize that these four things are part of the relationship, then it's probably in your best interest to rein them in and figure out how you can do something different other than what what's going on. You know, the first time we met, I really didn't like you that much. I didn't like you. Yeah, you did. So this movie is When Harry Met Sally. Harry and Sally, you know, they have different ideas about relationships. Harry thinks that men and women can't be friends because the sex part gets in the way, but Sally disagrees. And they enjoy a friendship for a while, and then they become really close, and then they sleep together. And this clip in particular is one of my favorite clips of all time. So here we go. Put your name in your books right now before they get mixed up and you don't know whose is whose. Because someday, believe it or not, you'll go 15 rounds over who's going to get this coffee table. This stupid... Wagon wheel, Roy Rogers garage sale coffee table. I thought you liked it. I was being nice. Okay, and this is one of the greatest lines in all of cinema. I want you to know that I will never want that wagon wheel coffee table. Look at them. She's looking up at him. She looks at him lovingly. She has this one-liner, and um, oftentimes just those one-liners of humor is enough to diffuse a lot of tension in the room. So I, I love that moment. You never get upset about anything. Don't be ridiculous. What? You never get upset about Joe. I never see that back up on you. How is that possible? Don't you experience any feelings of loss? Isn't it true that like when one person in the relationship is internally just having a meltdown, don't you love company in your meltdown? And he like draws her in and now all of a sudden they're in a conflict. Like first he starts off by exploding on his friends. She doesn't budge. She stays cool, calm and collected and she extends the grace. He just bumped into Helen. Then he sucks her in and is like, no, I I mean, I'm in this place and I want you to join me. It's hard. It's hard to stay away from someone when they want to bring you into that into that tornado of frustration and anger. It is. And what's really cool about this scene is what happens next, because I think this is the heart of what we're trying to invite couples to think through. Are you finished now? Yes. Can I say something? Yes. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. That's the parachute, right? Like, that's the ability to say, this is the fire alarm. This movie is about their friendship, and it's actually what brings them at the end to a successful relationship. They weathered through lots of relationship bumps and curves and turns and were able to repair with some consistency. And she lets him, which I think is really great. It's the friendship that pulls them out of the conflict and allows them to repair quickly before doing damage, before getting to that place where they end up stonewalling and creating this chasm between them. Some of the best advice I ever got was marry your best friend. And so when I was in the single world, I just kept thinking, I might not feel the fireworks, but I love this person for who they are because they're my best friend. And, And I think that's a really great place to start. Just want you to know, I will never want that wagon filled coffee table. <laughs> Double or nothing. Okay, so this is Love and Basketball. Monica and Quincy were childhood sweethearts, both set on becoming pro basketball players, and they both go off to USC where Quincy finds success while Monica struggles for playtime. Quincy struggles to deal with the media attention and butts heads with his dad about finishing school before going pro. Quincy feels Monica was not there for him through this, and the couple splits up. Can we talk? Talk to your new girlfriend. Look, I took the hold of Burger King. <laughs> Cheap date. You she had time for me. So you messed around to prove a point? What'd I just say? No, you got your head so far up your ass, it took a cheap day for you to notice me. <laughs> what cute man? Did I forget to kiss your ass like everybody else? You forgot to be there. All I think we all want is love and attention, and we want our partner to see us. And what I get from that one line is that he feels like he's been neglected or unseen. If we're gonna be together, I have to be able to trust you. He's backing up to drop this bomb, and I get the sense like he doesn't feel like that sense of security and safety. Like he's literally giving space because he's about to drop the bomb that we're breaking up. I'm not asking for us to be together. What? I mean, what whatever I did, we can fix this. I don't think so. You don't think so. This idea that if this couple 
showed up in my office to have this conversation. Again, I would let it play. And at the end, I would probably say, you know what, guys? You're probably right. It sounds like you don't have the total trust and commitment that it would be required for you to really make a run at a successful long-term relationship. This is similar to the Lala clip in this, in this way. They are both more committed to their own dream than their mutual dream. I think where it differs is that in the La La Land clip, they are going at each other. In this way, there's also like actual listening to one another and responding to what the other was saying. She says, we can fix this. And he actually has a thoughtful response, which is, I don't think so. It's not a flooded or escalated response. And that's where I think that those two clips are really different. I agree. You know, the La La Land is just two people in a monologue. They're talking for the sake of talking. Uh, there's nothing, they're not responding to one another. It's not a dialogue. This one's definitely a dialogue. I still like us to be friends. Friends. Look, I'll see you around. In both cases, the scene ends with somebody walking away. I always say, sometimes you do need a break. Sometimes you need a break from the moment or even from the relationship, but there's no reason to be impolite about it. I mean, if, if, if Laura and I were just having dinner at my house and she decided that she was done with dinner, it'd be very impolite for her just to grab her purse and leave and not say goodbye or thank you or whatever. And that's what happens in the La La Land clip. But in this case, at least he's polite about it, starting from, as Laura acknowledged, like when he backs up. They both know what it took to get to where they're at and what each other's dreams are. Like he's aware that she's fighting for a dream and she, he can probably understand to some degree why she can't be there for him and at the same time, it doesn't make it any easier. It might be too late for my soul, but I will protect yours. Okay, so this is the Twilight Saga. It's the Eclipse version. This is a classic love triangle between Bella, she's a teenage human, and Edward, a vampire, and then there's Jacob, a werewolf. And Jacob confesses that he's in love with Bella and forcefully kisses her. Edward later threatens Jacob and tells him to only kiss her if she asks for it. And you need to know that I'm in love with you. I really believe him too. And I want you to choose me. They both look like they're in so much pain to be talking about love right now, but okay, go for it, guys. Flesh and blood and warmth. And assault. <laughs> I think he's been watching too many Disney movies. He's like, if I just kiss her, and I think that's what he's going for, right? Like, he's ultimately trying to convince her that if I just kiss you, he's been watching 1938 Cinderella. That's what he's been watching. <laughs> FYI, it's not okay to put hands on your partner, male or female. I just think that it's important for us to mention that, that these young girls that are watching this and young males, like, might think it's okay to just punch someone. To me, this entire clip and this entire series is about boundaries, where they are and where they should be. And she's trying as best she can to establish a boundary for him, and he just clearly oversteps. She's expressing, she says, I don't feel that way for you. And he argues, he argues with her. I don't believe you. I don't believe that that's really how you're feeling. You don't get to argue with somebody else's feelings. Like those are their feelings. And I often find that that's where couples get really stuck is feeling like you have a place to argue your partner out of their feelings. And you just don't, that's how they feel. I, I, when that shows up in my office, people will say something, I feel blah, blah, blah. And somebody will say, that's not true. And, I, and I'll often go, well, it's true that they feel that. People get into trouble though when they say, I feel like, or especially when they say, I feel like you, because that's generally is no longer a feeling. It's more of a judgment. Both parts of this clip are about boundaries because if you can't honor your partner's boundaries, you're not a very trustworthy partner. And then I think by this point, Edward and Bella are sort of the chosen pair. All Edward's doing is trying to establish a very clear and appropriate boundary, a boundary of consent, um, which Bella was able to do for herself. Don't do this She's here. not Don't. sure what she wants. Don't do this Let me here. give you a clue. Wait for her to say the words. Fine. Of all the gin joints in all the towns in all the world, she walks into mine. Let's take a look at Casablanca. Basically, Rick is an American expat. He's running a nightclub and a gambling den in Casablanca during World War II. He meets and falls in love with Ilsa two years earlier in Paris. And she didn't tell Rick that she was married to a Czech resistance leader who she believed was dead. And when she learned that he was alive, Ilsa left Rick with no explanation. Then, Rick comes to possess letters that allow carriers to move freely around occupied Europe. And Ilsa and her husband need these letters. I'm sorry, but, but you you are our last hope. If you don't help us, Victor Lazlo will die in Casablanca. What of it? Now if you... 
Is that a gun in her hand? Yeah. That ought to motivate him. She needs the letters. I tried everything. Now I want those letters. Get them for me. I don't have to. I got them right here. She's making what's called a bid. She's saying, hey, I need something from you. When somebody makes a bid in your relationship, you have options. You can turn toward them or you can turn away from them. Um, you, incidentally, you can also turn against them. But in this case, she says, I need something. And he literally turns his body. Boom. Turn away. So the premise in couples therapy anyway is that if you're going to have a healthy relationship, you need to learn how to turn towards one another because turning toward creates more turning toward. Turning away creates more turning away. Watch this. Go. He turns away. She turns away. Now we know that she's going to grab a gun, which is now the escalation. Now she's turning against. In the context of this clip, he turns toward, right? He actually moves toward her. He diffuses the turning against with some courage and some patience which is what Ryan Gosling did not do in La La Land. He puts the gun in his stomach, but what he's done is he turns toward, and regardless of whether she's married to somebody else, she now also turns toward. Yeah, I mean, watch how quickly it de-escalates. The moment he turns toward her, her gun goes down. It it's literally just de-escalates the whole situation. That's the mechanics of this scene that I think is really clever and pretty consistent with the way we try and get couples to treat one another. Do we ever really pull guns out like that in conflict? No, but we absolutely have weapons that we well, pull Ryan out. Well, Ryan Gosling and, did, and, right? He said, you're the actress. That might as well have been. Uh-huh. That's a weapon, right? So you, like, we use our words as, as weapons toward our partner. We escalate things. We basically say, hey, you're not listening to me. This is really important. And maybe that'll wake you up. Maybe you'll recognize how important this situation is to me. But physical violence, verbal weapons, they're all the same. See, balancing two men at the same time. So this is Bad Moms. Amy's married with two kids and she's feeling overworked and undervalued. Hello. Her husband Mike is ungrateful and resentful of her and they decide to attend family counseling. With Wanda Sykes, who is amazing. <laughs> with Wanda Sykes as yeah. a therapist. Mike, Amy, I want you to look at each other and say three things that you like about each other. I like your spaghetti, and you make pretty good calzone. Was that three? That, that was like one and then one A. <laughs> I love that. I love that she says one and one A, because I do not let people yeah. off the hook in my, in my yeah. sessions. And I would have been like, OK, so where's, you know, like two and three? Part of what's challenging about being a therapist, watching therapists on television, is that they're not designed to actually be of help to the couple. They're designed to create comic relief. You're exactly right. Like she moves on way too quickly if she's gonna be of help to this couple. And I think what she does next kind of makes me groan because this I don't think works at all. Let's try some uh, role playing. All right, Amy, I want you to pretend to be Mike. And Mike, I want you to pretend to be Amy, okay? Hi, I'm Amy. All I did today was like rub lotion on my face and talk to talk to talk to talk okay in theory she's chasing empathy right like in theory she's trying to get them to have some empathy for the other you have to get buy-in from these guys that they are actually interested in empathy this is the problem here's the bottom line she's a perfectionist so what's the point of even trying? How okay? is that a problem? And she hasn't That's... given me a blowy since my oh, birthday God. five years ago. Are you She's so not <laughs> cool. Hold on. One second. Uh, this cracks me up because inevitably you have clients that are going to turn, like they're done talking to each other and then they turn to you like the ref. Like, okay, what are you going to do about this? Or like, now that I've got your ear, let me tell you about all the ways my partner is failing. Remember when I said that all marriages are savable? Well, it ain't gonna happen for you guys. So what do you think we should do? Well, as a therapist, I'm not allowed to tell you what to do. But uh, as a human being with two fucking eyes in my head, <laughs> yeah, I think you should get divorced as soon as possible. This is catastrophic shit. I'm not going to tell you to get a divorce, but I'm sure as hell might be thinking it. We're absolutely thinking sometimes, like, this is a shipwreck. This is going down, 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 down. And I want to tell them so bad to abandon ship, but you just don't. I think she really does let this couple down because she gives up on them before she should. So do you think that Wanda Sykes is a good therapist? No. I think she's a great comedian. I think she'd be a good individual life coach because that's where I think you can speak a little more fluently and openly like she says 
but in couples therapy, that was not good to couples therapy at all. I hope you're happy. So this movie is Hope Springs. The couple is Kay and Arnold, and they're both devoted to their marriage, but they're in need of some help to reignite the spark. Kay tells Arnold she wants them to undergo a week of intense marriage counseling in a main coastal resort town. Arnold, however, denies that their marriage is in need of help, and here they are in the therapist's office regardless. Right. Arnold, let's talk about you. What do you enjoy sexually? Sex. I am going to ask you to get more specific. Okay, fine. Was oral sex an option? Is that something that you would do regularly? No, I, 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 I don't, uh, no. I was not very, I'm, <clears throat> I was not comfortable with that. Giving or receiving? Huh? <laughs> I love that he specifies. The other thing that I would note about Steve Carell, who in talking about sex, he's not sensationalizing it. He's just saying, hey, w what's the deal? What do you like? And Arnold's trying to rile him up, right? He's like, missionary position. And he's like, oh, well, what about this? Use medications like Viagra? No. As we age, sometimes it becomes... It works. What would you say was working in your sex life when you were sexual together? Great question. What was working? So, so often couples come in and they are so focused on what's not going well. I instead like to flip it and say, what was going well? What did you enjoy? What did you like? And it just kind of shifts the entire dynamics. So far, Steve Carell's crushing it. Were there things that you wanted to do but didn't? Uh, I'm, I'm not really coming up with anything. Uh, there are no wrong answers here. Do you ever say that in your practice? I've seen that several times in these clips where therapists are saying there's no wrong answers. Do you ever say that, Zach? Not really. No, I, mean, I haven't either. Not that there are wrong answers. It's just, yeah, it's a cliche. I don't use it. Yeah. Did you have fantasies that you didn't feel comfortable telling her about? Of course. Well, um, I, I guess I used to think about Kay giving me a, an oral uh, at work, under the desk, at tax time. Here's what I think is happening, and I do this quite a bit. He's talking to Arnold, but he's really talking to Meryl Streep. And if you watch her, she is aware that she's getting information that she never had before in a way that she's never gotten it before. It's like you're, you're modeling and teaching the other person in the room, Meryl Streep, how to get more information, more access, and how to normalize that conversation and how to make it comfortable for your partner. Steve Carell's bias toward curiosity is really helpful. Um, I think he plays kind of a Columbo almost, like he plays a detective, which is why I think there's gonna be some aha moment that neither one of them see coming that but they be he's probably had a beat on for a while and wanda sykes is more of like you said more like a life coach who is trying to motivate very specific change in a hurry which is why there's exercises let's try this let's try that the couple she's working with just wasn't amenable to that in both cases the couple used that room to have conversations that they weren't having on their own so in that way the movie's got that right and that's designed to drive plot forward. The real question is what what does the therapist do to facilitate health and healing or just to bring reality to bear? Don't say a word. That was fun. Thanks, Laura. Thanks, Vanity Fair. Thanks, all of you out there in uh, the intertubes who are watching us talk about movies. It's always fascinating to me to learn more about relationships and therapy. And I'm glad to do it with uh, with all of you. Thanks, Zach. Thank you for all of our viewers. And, and thank you to Vanity Fair for having, having us on and being able to take a look at some uh, interesting representations of therapists in film.